the badger, Britain's largest remaining native land carnivore, and a mammal that has been capturing my attention for many years. Despite being a protected species, badgers have a long history of persecution, and since 2013, the government-endorsed mass cull has been devastating, with half the estimated UK badger population culled. The population health of badgers in the UK currently remains unknown. Without urgent action to determine the population level impacts, badgers could be persecuted to a point that they're no longer viable in some areas of Great Britain. As a result, Badger Trust are leading on a brand new project, State of the Badger, which is part of their Space for Badgers campaign. This citizen science project will deliver that urgent action that is needed to assess the health of badgers and the results will help form effective conservation strategies to protect them and prevent their ongoing persecution. Today I'm in southern England to meet Dr Hannah Trayford, Badger Trust's Campaigns and Research Manager, and Badger Trust Youth Ambassador and Wildlife Photographer Rachel Bigsby to find out more. Hannah, can you tell me a little bit about State of the Badger and why Badger Trust are leading on this project? State of the Badger is a citizen science project led by Badger Trust to look at the population health of badgers in England and Wales. So sadly, badgers are still persecuted a lot, both legally and illegally. So there's been the government endorsed cull that's been going on since 2013, and we think that that's killed up to about half the estimated population of badgers in England. Badgers, unfortunately, are also one of the key victims to wildlife vehicle collisions. We've probably all seen them dead to the side of the road. And they are still persecuted illegally through criminal activities as well. So State of the Badger is really looking about bringing all these threats together and seeing how it's impacting them on a population level. And really importantly for that, what we can do to better protect them. We know that badgers play a really important part in our healthy ecosystem, so how is State of the Badger going to benefit them? Badgers are an opportunistic omnivore, so a really key part of our healthy function ecosystem in our country. For example, their latrines act, help them act as seed dispersal mechanisms, their sets allow a refuge for other animals, and through their digging and foraging behaviours, they increase plant species diversity as well. So through State of the Badger, we hope to really look into what, what impact the threats are having so we can do targeted mitigation methods to protect them so they are part of our, our future for generations to come. How is State of the Badger coming along? At the moment for our pilot, um, we are working on two locations and they are Somerset and Lancashire. Um, and we've chosen two locations because it allows to test our methods. And importantly, these locations, one, Somerset, has been heavily culled since 2013 and Lancashire um, hasn't been part of the government endorsed cull. And this is really important for us to see the differences obviously ultimately to the badger populations in these areas, but also for us to test our techniques because we know the social dynamics of badgers has been greatly influenced by the cull. And so this is gonna have an impact on how we make these population estimates. And then looking ahead, what's the next step after the pilot survey has been completed? So after the successful completion of the pilot, we're hoping to roll the project out across England and Wales. So we'll also be putting a call out to more badger champions across the two countries because um, we'll be wanting as many people as possible to come and help us with the set surveys. So Badger Trust are obviously taken a lot on here and leading on this, but who else will be supporting you um, on the project? We've been really fortunate to have funding given to the pilot stage of the project by the John Speed and Lewis Foundation, Lush, and other generous individuals and organisations as well. And we've got a brilliant scientific advisory group, which are helping guide us on the scientific credentials of the project and making sure it's robust. And obviously a huge thank you to our brilliant Badger groups, of which we wouldn't be able to do the project without them. Badger Trust's Space for Badgers campaign aims to promote sustainable human badger coexistence and inspire new generations of badger champions. In making space for badgers, we can all learn to live alongside this iconic and ecologically important native mammal. We live in one of the world's most nature depleted countries. And badgers play a key part in our remaining healthy ecosystems. So protecting and conserving them for future generations is more important than ever. Looking for signs of badgers within our wider landscape is a critical part of the State of the Badger pilot study. And being able to identify these signs is a key part in the practical element of the Badger Champions volunteer training. Someone who knows a lot about looking for signs of badgers in her local woodland is wildlife photographer and Badger Trust Youth Ambassador, Rachel Bigsby. 
So we both spend a fair bit of our free time watching badgers. Yeah, we do. For me, it tends to be through camera traps and sort of setting them up in my local woodland mm -hmm. and then going back every few weeks to watch it back. But I do spend the odd evening hid in a bush watching them. But yeah, for well, you- who doesn't? <laughs> can't kick the habit. <laughs> but for you as a photographer, other than identifying their sets, what are the key signs you look for when photographing them? Oh, that's such a good question. I think I'm looking for behavior in my mm -hmm. photographs. So, of course, with the knowledge and the experience of badgers, we know that they follow the same paths every night. So yeah. identifying those foraging pathways around the set in the woodland gives me an idea of where they might be. Yeah, and of course, lots of other things like their latrine. So when they come out of their set in the evening, I've realized here that these badgers make a beeline straight for that latrine. So if I'm looking to photograph them when they first come out and they're doing that itchy grooming, aloe grooming, the best bit. I know that I, isn't it? I know that I need to be sort of near this path so they can do that and then follow straight down and, and if I'm hidden away and if I'm respectfully at a distance photographing them they might even walk towards the camera if I'm mm -hmm. if I'm on that track so there's some really really good things and then of course all the little snuffle pits if I'm looking for a bit of digging behavior in the ground yeah. or perhaps even scratching up a tree looking for some bugs so all of those little tidbits. How many times have you accidentally stood another tree? Oh, well, Billy, I'm not sure it's a number I can mention <laughs> on camera but let's just say these are not my first pair of boots. <laughs> What's the best thing you've ever found oh. when going out looking for badges? But I have found that it's very oh. cool. It's some badger fur. Look, at, Look that. at that. A nice chunk of badger fur. That's amazing. But isn't it just gorgeous? Oh, I love all the out. colours. You can. The textures as well. Look how wiry it is. And if you roll it between your fingers, you feel how it's like a triangular yeah, roll. It so it's a really good way of identifying if this is badger or if it's perhaps fallow deer or something else. But Look at that. Isn't it great? So this is a good find. I was very happy to, to have something, such an iconic part of a badger. What support do Badger Trust offer to volunteers who are getting involved in the pilot study? So Badger Trust are going to provide training resources to all volunteers. Now this includes set identification and um, habitat types and lots of other different ways of identifying these badger signs around the location. The Badger Champions training scheme provides in-person training from a badger ecologist, which is free to everyone that's also involved in the study. That's awesome. After training, volunteers are able to successfully identify set presence, badger activity signs and habitat types within each one kilometre square survey. Volunteers record the presence or absence of badger signs within each subsection. This includes badger paths, dung pits and latrines, hairs or prints to indicate badger activity. Volunteers also record set locations on maps provided, record a GPS or a what three words location and are encouraged to photograph the sets for types of confirmation. So volunteers can download an app on their mobile devices to directly submit these survey results or alternatively, volunteers can request paper copies of the standardised survey recording sheets to take part. State of the Badger comes at a crucial time for badgers. This study will deliver the urgent action needed to assess the population health of this ecologically important native animal. The results will help badger champions at every level create effective strategies to protect and conserve them. State of the Badger will make a lasting difference to badgers and people for generations to come. If you'd like to get involved with State of the Badger, head to Badger Trust website or email hello at badgertrust.org.uk.